as your favorite kids say. Sorry for the question. I wish to clarify for myself the true cause of this lamentable fact. And as a result of careful investigations, I finally understood and became aware with my whole being that this abnormality is due exclusively to one aspect of the chief particularity of their strange psyche. That particularity which has become a completely crystallized, insufferable part of their common presence and serves as a factor for the periodic arising in the world. There is a need to destroy everything outside themselves.
upon me that the length of their existence was century by century, and even year by year, becoming shorter, at a very definite and uniform rate, and this served as the starting point for my subsequent intensive study of the psyche of these three brain beings who have taken your fancy. Of course, when I first became aware of this, I immediately took into account not only the chief particularity of their psyche, that is, their periodic reciprocal destruction, but also the innumerable what are called diseases, found exclusively on that planet, and most of which, by the way, arose and continue to arise owing as always to the abnormal external conditions of ordinary being existence they themselves have established, conditions that are greatly to blame for their inability to exist normally until the sacred, are now. When I noticed this for the first time, and began to recall my former impressions on the subject, this fact flashed upon my essence, and each of the separate independent spiritualized parts of my whole presence became filled with the conviction that in the beginning these three brain beings of your planet had actually existed, according to their time calculation, for as many as 12, and some of them even for 15 centuries. For you to have a clearer picture of the rate at which the length of their existence diminished during this period, it is enough to tell you that when I left that solar system forever, the maximum length of their existence had decreased to no more than 70 to 90 of their years. And in recent times, if one of them were to exist even as long as this, all the other beings of that peculiar planet would consider that he had lived to a great age. And if anyone were to exist for a little over a century he would be exhibited in their museums, and of course all the rest of the beings there would know about him because his photograph and descriptions of his manner of existence, down to each step he takes, would keep appearing in all their newspapers, as they are called. So, my boy, since at the time when I suddenly became aware of this fact I had no special business on the planet Mars, and since it was quite impossible to try to probe this new peculiarity by means of the Tesquano, I decided to go in person to the planet Earth, in order to clear up for myself on the spot the causes of this phenomenon. Several Martian days after my decision, I again flew there on the ship occasion. At the time of this fifth flight of mine to your planet, there, center for the incoming and outgoing results of the perfecting of being comprehension, or there, center of culture, as they call it, was the city of Babylon, so it was just there that I decided to go. This time our ship occasion alighted on what is now called the Persian Gulf, because before our flight we had ascertained through the Tesquano that the most convenient place both for our plan of travel, which was to reach the city of Babylon, and for the mooring of our ship occasion would be that particular salutary Ophnian space of the surface of your planet. This expanse of water was convenient for my further travels because the large river on whose banks stood the city of Babylon flowed into it, and we proposed to go up this river in order to reach the city. In those days, the incomparably majestic Babylon was flourishing in every respect it was a center of culture, not only for the beings dwelling on the continent of Ashhart, but also for the beings of all the other land masses, large and small, which were adapted to the needs of ordinary being existence on that planet. When I first arrived in this 
center of culture, of theirs, they were just then preparing what later became the principal cause of acceleration and the rate of degeneration of their psychic organization, especially in the sense of the atrophy in them of the instinctive functioning of those three fundamental factors which ought to exist in the presence of every free brain being, namely, those factors which give rise to the being impulses existing under the names of faith, hope, and love. Single quote. And the degeneration of these being factors, increasing from one generation to another, has reached such a point that instead of the real being psych that should exist in the presence of every kind of free brain being, there now exists in the presence of your contemporary favorites of real psyche, to be sure, but one that can be very well described by the following wise saying of our dear Mullah Nasser Eden, it has everything in it except the core, or even the kernel. I must not fail to tell you as fully as possible what occurred during that period in Babylon, as all this information may serve you as valuable material for helping to elucidate and transmute in your reason all the causes that taken together have finally given rise to that psyche, so strange for three centered beings, which your contemporary favorites now have. To begin with, I must tell you that I obtained the information about the events I am going to relate chiefly from those beings whom the other three centered beings there call, learn. And before going any further, I must dwell a little on just what kind of beings are considered, learned, by the others on your planet. become worthy to be considered learned everywhere else in the universe, namely, those who from the earliest times, even on your planet, have acquired by their conscious labor and intentional suffering the ability to contemplate all the details of everything that exists from the point of view of world arising and world existence which enables them to perfect their highest being body to the corresponding degree of the sacred scale of objective reason, and later to sense the cosmic truths accessible to this highest body, according to its level of development but ever since the time of what is called the Tichlianetian civilization, and especially in our era, the beings there who become, learn, are almost always those who have learned by rote the greatest possible amount of vacuous information, such as old women love to repeat about what was supposed to have been said in the good old days. Note, by the way, that our venerated Mullah Nasser Eddin expresses the importance of such learned beings as follows. Everybody seems to believe that our learned professors know that half a hundred is fifty. There on your planet, the more such information one of your favorites stores up, information he has never verified, and moreover has never sensed for himself, the more learned he is considered to be. Well, my boy, when we reached the city of Babylon, it was literally overflowing with learned beings who were gathered there from almost everywhere on your planet. As the reason for their gathering is extremely interesting, I will tell you something about this also. The point is that most of the learned beings of the Earth had been assembled there under compulsion by a highly eccentric Persian king, under whose dominion at that period was also the city of Babylon. 
help you understand the fundamental aspect of all the results of the abnormal conditions of ordinary being existence that gave rise to the eccentricity of this Persian king, I must first enlighten you about two facts that had been established long before. from the time of the loss of the continent of Atlantis, there gradually began to be crystallized and in later centuries to be definitely fixed in the presence of every one of your favorites a particular property, thanks to which the sensation called happiness for one's being, experienced from time to time by every three brain being from the satisfaction of his inner self-evaluation, appears in their presence exclusively when they have at their disposal a great deal of that famous metal they call, gold. Single quote. The worst of it is that, because of this particular property in their common presence, the sensation arising from the possession of that metal is reinforced by the beings surrounding the possessor, and even by those beings who learn about it only by hearsay rather than through their own perceptions at the same time it is the custom there never to take into account the kind of being manifestations through which someone came to own a great quantity of this metal, and what is more, such a being evokes in the presences of all those around him the functioning of that crystallized consequence of the properties of the organ kind of upper called envy. And the second fact is this, that when their chief particularity functions in the presences of your favorites at an accelerated tempo, and the process of reciprocal destruction breaks out among their different communities according to established custom, then after this maleficent property, inherent in them alone, has run its course and this process of theirs ceases for a while, the king of the community in which a greater number of subjects has survived, survived, on receiving the title of conqueror, usually seizes for himself everything belonging to the beings of the conquered community. The king conqueror then usually commands his subjects to despoil the conquered community of all their lands, and to seize all the young beings of female sex and all the riches accumulated in the course of centuries. Well, my boy, when the subjects of that eccentric Persian king conquered the beings of another community, he ordered them not to take or even touch any of these, but instead to bring back as captives only the learned beings of the conquered community. In order to represent clearly to yourself and understand just why this peculiar craze, proper to him alone, arose in the individuality of that Persian king, you must know that at the period of the Tikliamitian civilization, in the town of Chiklero, a learned free brain being by the name of Harnakum, whose essence later became crystallized into what is called an eternal Hasnamus individual, invented the notion that any old metal you like, found in abundance on the surface of that planet, could easily be transformed into the rare metal, gold, and that all you needed to know for this was one very small secret. This pernicious invention of his became widely spread there and, having become